Hello, I am preparing these videos according to M scores. There may be changes in the scores, which is your rank. You can write in the comments. Thank you. Number 10. The Big Country. Retired, wealthy sea captain James McKay arrives in the vast expanse of the West to marry Fianc E. Pat Terrell. McKay is a man whose values and approach to life are a mystery to the ranchers and ranch foreman Steve Leach takes an immediate dislike to him. Pat is spoiled, selfish, and controlled by her wealthy father, Major Henry Terrell. The Major is involved in a ruthless land war, over watering rights for cattle, with a rough-hewn clan led by Rufus Hannessy. The land in question is owned by Julie Maragon, and both Terrell and Hannessy want it. Number 9. Rio Bravo. Sheriff John T. Chance has his hands full after arresting Joe Burdett for murder. He knows that Burdett's brother Nathan, a powerful rancher, will go to any lengths to get him out of jail. Chance's good friend Pat Wheeler offers to help, but within 20 minutes of making, the offer is gunned down in the street, shot in the back, that leaves his elderly deputy stumpy. The town drunk dude wants a deputy and a pretty good shot when he was sober and a young hand Colorado who used to work for Wheeler. Nathan Burdett, meanwhile, has a couple of dozen men at his disposal. Chance does his best to prepare, all the while romancing a pretty gambler who goes by the name of Feathers. Number 8. Dances with Wolves. Elt John Dunbar is dubbed a hero after he accidentally leads Union troops to a victory during the Civil War. He requests a position on the western frontier, but finds it deserted. He soon finds out he is not alone, but meets a wolf, he dubs two socks, and a curious Indian tribe. Dunbar quickly makes friends with the tribe, and discovers a white woman who was raised by the Indians, he gradually earns the respect of these native people, and sheds his white man's ways. Number 7. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Butch and Sundance are the two leaders of the Hole in the Wall gang. Butch is all ideas, Sundance is all action and skill. The West is becoming civilized, and when Butch and Sundance rob a train once too often, a special posse begins trailing them no matter where they run. Over rocks, through towns, across rivers, the group is always just behind them. When they finally escape through sheer luck, Butch has another idea. Let's go to Bolivia, based on the exploits of the historical characters. Number 6. High Noon On the day he gets married and hangs up his badge, Marshall Wilkane is told that a man he sent to prison years before, Frank Miller, is returning on the noon train to exact his revenge, having initially decided to leave with his new spouse. Will decides he must go back and face Miller, however, when he seeks the help of the townspeople he has protected for so long, they turn their backs on him. It seems Kane may have to face Miller alone, as well as the rest of Miller's gang, who are waiting for him at the station. Number 5 unforgiven. After escaping death by the skin of her teeth, the horribly disfigured prostitute, Delilah Fitzgerald, and her appalled and equally furious co-workers summon up the courage to seek retribution in 1880s Wyoming's dangerous town of Big Whiskey. With a hefty bounty on the perpetrators' heads, triggered by the tough sheriff, Little Bill, Daggett's insufficient sense of justice, the infamous former outlaw and now destitute Kansas hog farmer, William Money, embarks on a murderous last mission to find the men behind the hideous crime. Along with his old partner in crime, Ned Logan, and the brash but inexperienced young gunman, the Schofield Kid, Money enters a perilous world he has renounced many years ago, knowing that he walks right into a deadly trap. However, he still needs to find a way to raise his motherless children. Now, blood demands blood. Who is the hero, and who is the villain? Number 4 for a few dollars more. Drifting from town to town, the poncho-clad man with no name and the lightning-fast right hand rides into the town of El Paso in search of maniacal escaped convict El Indio. It's been 18 short months since the deadly confrontation in Perón Pugno de Dolari, and this time, the solitary stranger, now a professional bounty hunter, must go against his beliefs and do the unthinkable join forces with hawk-eyed marksman Colonel Douglas Mortimer to collect the hefty reward. Now, 
as El Indio and his cutthroats have already set their sights on robbing the crammed with cash bank of El Paso, the stage is set for a bloody showdown at high noon. Against the backdrop of silent double crosses and fragile allegiances, but is it worth dicking with death for a few dollars more? Number 3. Django Unchained In 1858, a bounty hunter named King Schultz seeks out a slave named Django and buys him because he needs him to find some men he is looking for. After finding them, Django wants to find his wife, Broomhilda, who along with him were sold separately by his former owner for trying to escape. Schultz offers to help him if he chooses to stay with him and be his partner. Eventually, they learn that she was sold to a plantation in Mississippi knowing they can't just go in and say they want her. They come up with a plan so that the owner will welcome them into his home and they can find a way. Number 2. Once Upon a Time in the West Story of a young woman, Mrs. McBain, who moves from New Orleans to frontier Utah, on the very edge of the American West. She arrives to find her new husband and family slaughtered, but by whom? The prime suspect, coffee lover Cheyenne, befriends her and offers to go after the real killer, assassin gang leader Frank. In her honor, he is accompanied by Harmonica, a man already on a quest to get even. Number 1. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly Blondie, the Good, is a professional gunslinger who is out trying to earn a few dollars. Angel Eyes, the Bad is a hitman who always commits to a task and sees it through as long as he's paid to do so, and Tuco, the ugly, is a wanted outlaw trying to take care of his own hide. Tuco and Blondie share a partnership, making money off of Tuco's bounty, but when Blondie unties the partnership, Tuco tries to hunt down Blondie. When Blondie and Tuco come across a horse carriage loaded with dead bodies, they soon learn from the only survivor, Bill Carson and Tonio Casali, that he and a few other men have buried a stash of gold in a cemetery. Unfortunately, Carson dies and Tuco only finds out the name of the cemetery, while Blondie finds out the name on the grave. Now, the two must keep each other alive in order to find the gold. Angel Eyes who had been looking for Bill Carson discovers that Tuco and Blondie met with Carson and knows they know where the gold is. Now, he needs them to lead him to it. Now the good, the bad and the ugly must all battle it out to get their hands on $200,000.0 worth of gold.